Well, I'm back out here at this uh, older outdoor unit, and uh, interestingly, I ran the date codes on it, and it's uh, 20 years old, a lot older than I thought it was. And it's been running very well after I topped off the charge on it. It's been keeping me very cool in the master bedroom. But since this just runs the master bedroom, it stays off most of the day, and that gives me a chance to work on it. And um, one of the other things that you can do to your heat pump to make it last that much longer is um, pay attention to that accumulator right here. All these suction lines like to sweat, especially in hot, humid weather. Um, it's 80, it's uh, about 11 o'clock right now, and it's already 86 degrees and 77% humidity, so it's just miserable out here, and it's going to be in the upper 90s today. Um, and in those kinds of conditions, there's lots of moisture that forms around these accumulators and the suction lines. Um, looking at this Goodman, you can see, since this is uh, serving the main house, you can see just how much moisture it removes. It's just got the entire pad saturated with uh, the moisture. And so what ends up happening on these is that eventually the moisture, there's a small chink in the armor, small imperfection in the coating, which admittedly is very thick. Um, it starts a corrosion process and eventually what will happen is, particularly on the bottom side of the accumulator, you'll get a pinhole leak and you'll start having a refrigeration leak. You'll lose all the Freon, it'll go out on low pressure cutout, and um, that's pretty much the end of it. You may burn the compressor up, it just depends on um, how quick you are to discover the problem and uh, make the repairs. And with a 20 year old unit like this, um, a lot of technicians or a lot of companies that you would call, they would more than likely try to sell you a new unit versus trying to uh, make the repairs. It's an R22 system, so given the cost of R22 and the labor involved to change that out and everything, most people would probably convince you to go ahead and uh, get a new unit. But this one is working perfectly. The coil is in excellent condition. Fan motor is in excellent condition, even though it doesn't look like it. It spins very freely. Um, so I want to see if I can get a little bit more life out of here uh, by just uh, scraping off all this corrosion and everything, peeling back the paint until I get the good metal, and uh, putting a corrosion inhibitor on there. Um, there's not really much I can do with the bottom of this thing. Um, so I'll just have to basically wait for that to go. I can probably maybe put a little bit of grease under there or something, but... It's still wet from last night, from running from last night, but the top of it's dry. I'm hoping that right here is the worst of it, because it's exposed to the sun, and it's also exposed to rain and everything, even when the unit's not running. And uh, hopefully I'll get more life out of that, and if not, I'll just go ahead and unsweat these two joints and pop in a new accumulator and charge it back up and be good to go. But I'm going to see if I can uh, prolong that little activity for a few more years, and keep this guy running and uh, not run the risk of burning out the compressor. By the way, there's the data plate. I know it's upside down, but it's just a little two-cylinder Bristol, one and a half ton. Uh, I'm going to coat this thing with a product called um, Corollist from the Eastwood Company. Um, usually used for automobiles, like in the uh, rocker panel areas and things like that. It's a high solid content. It works very, very well. And the beauty of it is, is you do not have to get the surface of this spotless. Uh, you can have, all you really need to do is just loosen the uh, loose pieces of rust and get those out of there. And um, then you can go ahead and just um, brush it on. And since this unit serves the master bedroom, it's not going to be run for probably another 10 or 12 hours. That'll give this enough time to cure, and um, I can go ahead and run it and be done with it. So, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start that process and see what we end up with. Here's an example of what I'm talking about on this Goodman unit. Uh, that's the um, suction line accumulator, and it's just completely soaked in moisture because of the uh, superheat coming back from the indoor coil. 
And it'll last a long time, but if there is any imperfection in that coating on there, it'll start to rust out and leak, and that's when you start having problems. That's uh, the main problem with these units, is they'll leak the Freon over time. I've already started cleaning it up with a wire brush on this side, and I'm going to peel back some of this loose paint until I get the good metal, and then uh, put the coating on there. Okay, I think I've got this thing prepped up as best I can. And you can just see the level of damage of being outside for 20 years has done on that accumulator. Failure of this accumulator is imminent. It's an absolute certainty. It's going to happen, but hopefully um, we can control when it happens and be prepared for it. It is designed very well. It's very thick. So I've uh, got a lot more material to go through before I actually start having a leak. Um, I don't know what's going to happen on the bottom. Nine times out of ten they start leaking on the bottom versus the top, but this is the best I can do. The bottom is still kind of wet, so um, I'm not sure what I can do about that. Maybe wait for the winter time and then maybe put some grease under there, but um, this thing's all ready to, to go to have the coating put on there. and hopefully uh, get a little more, little more life out of this thing or at least defer some of the cost. So the way this unit's running, uh, it's running very well. The only thing that's going to happen is the accumulator is going to go bad and the original condenser fan motor bearings are going to fail. The motor is doing okay. It's in great shape as you can see it's losing some of the oil and that's perfectly normal as the oil just gravity feeds down over time with the higher temperatures. It eventually leaks out and dries up and the bearings will seize. Uh, this motor does not have any uh, provisions for lubrication. You can take these things apart. There's a little wick inside of the front bearing and rear bearing and you can re-lubricate them. <clears throat> the problem is, is getting it back together. It's very difficult to get it back together in such a way that the the shaft is not um, at an angle and creating a lot of friction. So um, these pretty much are a single use type motor but it's already lasted 20 years. Uh, there's no reason why it won't last a few more. Other than the motor and the accumulator uh, there's no reason why this heat pump can't last many many more years. The death nail would be the coil. If there's lots of corrosion on the coil and the coils start flaking off, that's when you have to replace the unit. That would not be economical to put a new coil in here and more than likely they don't make these coils anymore. But they do make accumulators and they do make condenser fan motors so as long as the coils are kept clean, you know, get in here with a garden hose and wash them out backwards like that. As long as you keep the coils clean and everything, um, you get a lot of life out of these things. So I'm going to go ahead and coat that thing up and see what it looks like. Okay, about uh, 10 minutes later I'm done. The coating went on there really well. Filled in all of the uh, imperfections there. And wicked up to the tubing a little bit, which is good. So we got complete coverage. So I hope this will uh, buy me more time with this unit. Um, while you're in here, you also want to make sure you feel toward the bottom of the compressor and make sure that it's warm. That means that your crankcase heater is working good. Uh, those two black wires down in there go to the crankcase heater. And those are the compressor start and run winding wires. And the crankcase heater is uh, there to um, basically keep liquid refrigerant out of the crankcase. So you want to make sure that's working as well. So this is just a little, you know, springtime maintenance on this old unit here. Just cleaning everything out inside and raising it up off the ground to prevent corrosion. And uh, just looking around and just trying to predict where the next failure is going to be and try to head it off at the pass, like coating some of these surfaces that are badly corroded and rusted and everything. So I would uh, say this unit's done. It's going to take about maybe four to six hours for that coating to dry to the point where it could get wet again. 
but that's okay because this just feeds the master bedroom so I'll go ahead and leave the lid off of here and let it dry and be in good shape hopefully for several more years and uh, this is the coating that was used. I bought this a long time ago. I'm not even sure if you can still get it, but there's also other products out there, probably from Rust-Oleum and other companies as well. The main thing to um, look out for is get something with a really high solid content, nice and thick, that'll uh, provide a long-lasting coating. And if you get drips down the side, don't worry about it. Um, you know, it's not for aesthetic purposes. It's just a functional coating. And um, I just put one coating on there, that's all that needs, and that way it'll dry before uh, the next time this unit's run.